This morning, Neil Gorsuch will be sworn in as an associate Supreme Court justice. Justice Anthony Kennedy will preside over the ceremony, marking the first time that a justice will serve alongside his former clerk. The Washington Post reports the newest justice could have an immediate impact as the high court considers whether to hear two cases concerning the Second Amendment. Mark Halpern, uh, let, let's talk about it. What is the state of what's the state of the court now? What's the state of politics? What is the fallout of what happened last week on this course? Well, facts? there are a bunch of cases that now he will he will. Uh, sit on, and if he votes as people expect, there'll be fewer 4 4 ties and more 5 4 decisions that conservatives will, will be happy about. But what about in the Senate? Uh, did, uh, oh, the fallout uh, in the Senate of the change the rules? I mean, you know, it's changed now, not for legislation, but the first time the president's agenda runs up against a roadblock in the Senate, I think you'll hear people talk about changing it for legislation. You know, the people have kind of retreated to their own corners. You hear a lot of senators in both parties kind of wringing their hands saying this wasn't a great moment for the Senate. But the change has been made, just as the Democrats changed it for other nominations uh, under Harry Reid. And it moves, it moves towards the process and the personalities overwhelming any desire to have comedy in the Senate. Joining us now from Capitol Hill, member of the Foreign Relations Committee, Republican Senator Cory Gardner of Colorado, who stayed in town. I, well, I was, I was home over the weekend briefly, but back uh, today for the swearing in. Okay, so uh, looking ahead, um, well, you're, you're going to be there for the swearing in. You support this clearly. Um, how do you think Gorsuch will impact the court? Well, I think if you look back to when Justice Scalia was on the court, uh, he's going to be very much ruling in, uh, this in line with Justice Scalia. There's some differences emerging over issues like Chevron deference, which is deference to the administrative state, whether we give too much deference to the administration uh, regulatory bodies or not. Uh, but I think over the last year, it's correct to say that 4-4 four -four ties will no longer be a thing that we see going forward. There will be more in line with the Scalia court. Senator, uh, last week, obviously, 59 cruise missiles fired off into the night in Syria. You're on the Foreign Relations Committee. What about an extension, a rewriting, and an approval of a, a, a new authorization for use of military force? Would you favor that? Well, I think we have to hear from the administration exactly what they are going to do. This was a, a legal strike, a, a deterrence effort to prevent Who the Assad said it was regime. Legal? Uh, I believe it was, uh, using the authorities of the 2001 AUMF on terrorism, protecting our men and women in uniform, as well as uh, to go after a violation of international humanitarian law. Uh, but I do think that there's going to be a conversation. There should be a well-thought-out plan presented from the White House to Congress, uh, if necessary, seeking our approval. Uh, we need to have that plan, and it needs to be supported by the international community so that we can see an end to the Assad regime. Mike? Oh, Mark Halpern, go ahead. Senator, as you followed it and know about it, what came out of the president's highly uh, touted summit with the president of China? Well, there's a couple of things emerging today, both on the economic front. It appears that there may be some ground gained on allowing U.S. investors in certain financial enterprises in China. But I also think it's important that we understand what happened as it relates to North Korea. I hope that in the coming days and weeks, we will see emerge from China a plan to deal with Kim Jong-un's nuclear stockpile and how China is going to take responsibility for the situation in North Korea. And I hope we see more along those lines. Elise Jordan. Senator Gardner, I... In 2013, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you supported having the president come to Congress for approval of any military action in Syria. What's changed now with last week's action and your concerns over the legality? And I just noticed that in your statement about it, you mentioned frequently international law and how this was within international law, but what about American law and the Constitution and receiving authorization for military force? Well, I think over the last four years since 2013, we've seen continued uh, atrocities uh, carried out by the Assad regime against its own people, including multiple chemical weapons attacks at this point. And we've also seen four years' worth of Russian and Syrian escalation and complicity in the Assad regime's acts against its own people. And so I do think this uh, strike uh, was limited in proportionality to the chemical weapons attacks intended to deter the Assad regime from using future chemical weapons against its people. But uh, like I said, if there's going to be future actions, and I hope there will be, uh, to eliminate the Assad regime, to end the Assad regime, that has to be a well thought out plan presented to Congress. If the approval is necessary, let's have that approval and let's make sure that this is something that's not just unilateral by the United States, but has the involvement, the buy-in and the support of the international community. Senator Hopscotch in the Globe, as they used to say. Let's go back to North Korea. Uh, 
You've seen all the, I, I suspect you've seen a lot of intel about North Korea given your role in the Foreign Relations Committee. So if perchance China in coordination with the United States, South Korea, if Kim Jong-un was suddenly taken off the table as the head of North Korea, are you at all concerned with who would follow him? Well, I think there is a question of who would follow him. And in the conversations I've had with experts on North Korea, I don't think anybody has that answer. At a committee hearing a month ago or so, I asked uh, several experts on a scale of zero to 100, where are we in planning for the transition away from the Kim Jong-un regime? And they gave me about a three. And so we are a long ways away from understanding what happens after Kim, Kim Jong-un. That's why I think it's necessary the United States, South Korea, Japan come together in a strong alliance working with China to develop develop a plan not only for denuclearization of Kim Jong-un's regime, but what happens next. It's a very important question that we do not have answered at this point. All right, Senator Cory Gardner, thank you very thank much you. for being on the show. Thank you so much, Thanks. Senator. Thanks for me. Greatly appreciate it. Up next. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.